Fred here, welcome back to the Gear Obsession channel. In this episode, we will be taking a look at the Coast Micro Toolbox, so stay tuned. I was walking around my local surplus store and I came across this. It just grabbed me and said, buy me, buy me. And I paid eight dollars and 88 cents i don't mind paying a little more than what you could probably get it for because i like to support my local businesses especially ones that are not you know big box stores and chain stores i do believe it or not still go into local you know businesses and buy product and i love bringing products that i find out of these local stores to you but you can go probably find this well you can find this on amazon for the unbelievable low price of six dollars and fifty cents also i went on to the coast website and i noticed that this is discontinued yeah so if you do want this you better act quickly um it's probably cheaper than what it originally cost it was probably upwards of eight to ten dollars but you know probably Places like Amazon are just clearing their inventory out of this discontinued product. Coast has some other micro tools that they're selling that I'm sure they say is better and all of the other stuff. But this thing is tiny. It's only like two and a half inches and it has 12 tools in it for, for $6.50. Is it worth it? Well, let's take a close look and see. Here's everything that came in the blister pack. You get a uh, catalog. And I'm not going to waste time with that. And this is the literature that basically tells you that um, these tools can lock. Uh, and I'll explain that in a minute. You get some um, wrench sets, you know, different sizes right there. And you get a lifetime guarantee. They got a phone number to call if you need some more information. And it is made in China. And they also go over all the tools, but we'll go ahead and take a close look at that right now. So here's the tool. You can see it's extremely small. And you may ask yourself, um, why would I carry such a small tool when there are such better tools out there that are more capable? Well, the problem is the more capable the tool, you, usually the bigger and heavier it gets. See, this guy is only one and a half ounces two and a half inches long it, it's extremely small when you carry something like this you you know you have it on you and um by the way this is the leatherman super tool um but you know that this thing is on you because it's heavy it's taking up a lot of room whether it's hanging off your belt or in your pocket and for some people they end up not carrying it so then you're carrying nothing Plus, you might also uh, be going to a function where you want to, you know, look like you're you're not Batman with a utility belt with all kinds of stuff. So again, those are times where a nice mini tool like this would really come in handy. So let's take a look at what comes with this. You you get a key ring right here. You get a ruler, and what you do is you open up this cover, just like this. And you could see that there are um, numbers <laughs> with measurements. So you're able to uh, do both inches and I guess that's millimeters, uh, I think. You also get a wrench here as far as, uh, you know, a nut driver or whatever you want to call it to uh, go ahead and take care of your wrench needs as far as quarter inch, five sixteenths and three eighths inch. Now this cover also serves as a locking device. You can see how this piece comes down here and I'll show you why that's important here. The first tool I'm going to take out is the knife. And you can see when I pulled that out they sort of a couple of them came out. That's called clumping. Yes, that does happen. Now we'll go ahead and open that up and you see that it does lock. You know, it has a little spring tension right here on the back as you can see. So it does sort of lock, but that's not the only way it locks. When you close this cover, this little piece here comes down behind the notch on the blade. And you can see that it actually helps keep it from closing on you. 
pretty neat. By the way, while we're looking at this, the steel that's used in this is a 440 steel, which is actually pretty good for such a cheap tool. And I believe it's 440C, but it's uh, there's not too much literature out there. The blade's about one and a half inches, and you can see that it is a partially serrated spear point blade. Or it could be a draw point. Um, I think it's closer to a spear point and it, it feels pretty sharp while well, we have it out we might as well just uh, get some of the tests out of the way I'm gonna grab a piece of paper and let's see if it comes sharp I mean it, it does feel sharp but uh, let's see okay it is pretty sharp you can see it's a little rough so it's adequately sharp. It probably needs to be touched up. Now this this isn't a, this is not a chisel point. It's a regular, um, you know, both edges have a grind on it, and this does feel like um, a hollow grind all the way up to the top. So a clamp-on tool is not going to work too good on this. So you're just going to have to uh, use either your pull-through sharpeners or a stone of some sort. And you have serrations there. They're not the prettiest serrations in the world, but um, I'm sure they're functional. So we'll go ahead and stow that, and let's look at some of the other tools. The next tool here is a file. So you have a file, so you can take care of your manicure needs, and you also have a fingernail picker right there, which uh, I definitely need to use. Let's look at the next tool. Next tool is scissors. So let's, uh, it's hard to get all these out. All right, scissors. Let's go running. <laughs> all right, scissors. This is the kind that does not have a spring. It just has a, a bar there. So let's see if those work like they're supposed to. You got to sort of get the hang of these things and get the feel for how they work. And once you do, they, they function better. So, not the most comfortable to cut with, but they do work well for such a small pair of scissors. So, what do we have next? Again, um, getting all these tools out, you're probably going to have to start by pulling other tools out. So, we'll go ahead and put the scissors away. Come on. There we go. If you got big hands with fat fingers, <laughs> like I do. Okay, here you have a sort of like a two-dimensional um, Phillips screwdriver. It'll take care of your small Phillips screws right there. And what else do we have? We have a saw right there. And actually, this is this is a pretty good saw. I mean, you're not you're not going to saw like trees down, but for little twigs. But um, the teeth and the way that they're they're cut are actually what you see on the really good saws on the multi tool. So I'm pretty impressed. Next is a screwdriver. <clears throat> Excuse me, flathead. Right there, see the nail nick right there, which is really, um, I guess it is useful once you get one out and get the other one back. All right, and here. You have a bottle opener right there, and you have a smaller screwdriver. I wish, you know, the, now that's all the tools. Now, I wish it had a smaller screwdriver, because for those of us who wear glasses, you have to tighten them up. It's always handy to have one of them teeny weeny weeny <laughs> screwdrivers, and it would have been nice with this tool. Now, if you're a handyman or handy woman, you can get a grinding wheel and sort of grind this down to even be smaller if you're creative so things that this does not have that you're losing by carrying this tool is you don't have a set of pliers and man something just went in and out of my head that quick you don't get a set of pliers and I forgot the other thing <laughs> you don't get like wire cutters oh you don't get a can opener all right, so that's what we don't get with this. Other than that, if these are the type of tools that you like to carry and you don't like carrying big, heavy tools, such as this extremely good 
um, super tube by Leatherman. Um, this could be the answer, but not for very long because again, these have been discontinued. So you're only gonna, you know, probably find them for, you know, probably a couple of more months, and everyone will be sold out, which is really disappointing because, in my opinion, this this is a pretty good tool for for six dollars and fifty cents. I recommend this, and I give it a. 9 out of 10. The reason why it loses a point is it has bead blast finish, so that sort of makes it more um, subjected to rusting. And it doesn't have a can opener. I would have liked it if it had... I mean, I could care less if it has a bottle opener, because most bottles have the twist tops, and you can easily improvise a way to open up a bottle, like the edge of a table and, or whatever. But can opening is a pain in the butt with just using a knife or a big rock. So I'd rather have a, a can opener than a bottle opener. But I uh, really rec uh, recommend it. 9 out of 10. Okay, well, thank you very much for joining me here at the Gear Obsession channel. I really appreciate every friend, viewer, subscriber, and you. And I hope you have a great evening. Take care. Bye.